Good morning, Hope River. I am happy you're here with us this morning on what may be the most difficult day yet in this pandemic for us. I mean, it's Mother's Day. It's hard to imagine not being with our mothers, both those at church and those in our families. So this morning, we want to start by including this special tribute to our mothers from Aaron and Stacy. Today's scripture is from Proverbs 31. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink, and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb, in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships she bringeth her food from afar. She writheth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise in the gates. The passage we just heard is from Proverbs 31. It's the advice from a mother to her son on what kind of woman he should marry. The woman we now know as the Proverbs 31 woman. The Proverbs 31 woman. I grew up hearing about her. The truth is, I grew up feeling intimidated by her. I mean, who wouldn't? She is the shining example of that woman we all want to be. And so many times in my life, she has been the reminder of everything I am not. So honestly, I avoided that Proverbs 31 woman. I created a version of her in my head of a do-it-all, know-it-all, perfect and unapproachable woman. In today's world, she would be the one with the 
Instagram or Facebook feed filled with all her gourmet meals she cooks. A perfectly decorated and clean home. Talented and well-behaved children. And her loving husband who does and says all the right things. I mean, who wants to be that person? So when she showed up in a Bible study or a sermon, I just tuned her out. But with age comes perspective and hopefully some wisdom. I've been slowly building a much better relationship with the Proverbs 31 woman, and I'm finding she is not at all the person I thought she was. Actually, I've found her to be pretty interesting and quite approachable, and yes, likable. I realized I was always focused on the details, the impossible things she did. She's like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. Does shopping on Amazon count? And is buying some grape juice at Wise a good substitute for buying a field and planting a vineyard? I don't own a spindle, but I do have a sewing machine I haven't quite learned how to use. And when it snows, I don't make coverings for our beds, but I do plug in the electric blankets. And let's not talk about getting up at the crack of dawn and my strong arms. I do have to say though, that my lamp tends to burn very late at night while I'm reading a book. See what I mean? I got stuck on all the details, the things that she did, and I lost focus of the big picture, the kind of person that she was. She was a woman of noble character. It was her character that determined her actions. What she did came out of who she was. She was a person who brought good things to those around her. Her husband could have confidence in her. He could trust her because of her character. He didn't have to worry about what she would say or what she would do, that it would bring harm to him because he knew her character. We see her true character, what she values through her behavior. She valued people. She valued the reputation of her husband. She valued her family in serving and caring for their needs. She valued the poor, the needy, and the outcast by opening her home and her heart to them. She valued her own mental and physical health, and she took care of herself. She valued her purpose. She used her gifts and talents to serve her family and others. She valued wisdom, and she was careful to pass that wisdom on to her children. She laughed at the future, not because she didn't care about it, but because she was confident that she was prepared for whatever may come. But many women do noble things. Many women have strength and character. So what makes the Proverbs 31 woman different than all of them? Is it her beauty, her sense of style, her charm, or her sense of humor? No, it is because she fears the Lord. She does all these wonderful things because of her character, and her character is rooted in the fear of God. She fears God, but she's not afraid of him. She doesn't do all these things out of fear, but out of love. Because she is filled with the love of God, that love overflows into all who know her. Just like the Proverbs 31 woman, our relationship with God will form our character and our character will motivate our actions. What that looks like will be different for all of us. Your gifts, talents, strengths are unique to you. Don't try to be someone that you're not. Don't get caught up in the details. What to do, what to say, what field to buy so you can plant your vineyard. The women behind me are my Proverbs 31 women. My mother, my mother-in-law, my grandmothers, my great-grandmothers. The way they loved me and the things they taught me is unique to each of them, but they all impacted me greatly. The big picture of their lives and character stay with me. So what is your big picture? Are you focused on your relationship with God, your father? Are you learning more about him and allowing who he is to determine your own character? Is who you are more important than what you do? 
Friends, you can do so many wonderful things, but it is who you are that really matters. And if you are a woman who fears the Lord, you are loved, you are valued, you are worthy to be praised, you are worth far more than rubies. You are honored, you are blessed, you are a Proverbs 31 woman. To all my Hope River friends, you women of hope, and all my friends and family who may see this, and especially my own mother, thank you for being Proverbs 31 women in my life. You are worth so much more to me than rubies. I miss you. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you guys for sharing that, and just happy Mother's Day to you today. We're going to continue this morning. A uh, series we started a couple weeks ago on the book of First Peter. So if you want to grab your Bibles and turn to First Peter chapter three, that'd be great. When I was in school, I remember an exercise that a teacher had us do one time, and the exercise was this: we had to write our own eulogy. Eulogy just simply means to say a good word. So we had to write that thing that we would want people to say, those good things that we would want to, people to say about us at our funeral. It was a helpful exercise because it helped clarify our priorities, what we wanted to get out of life, and maybe kind of where we were in relationship to those goals at that point. So my question for you this morning is, who's going to say the good things about you at your funeral? Who's going to give your eulogy? Is your spouse, if you're married, going to say good things about you? Will your children say good things about you? How about that family member? Now, family members always give me a little bit of pause. I do a lot of services for people in our community who don't have a church home. And when I'm talking with a family, I always ask them, before we just do an open mic time of sharing eulogies and good words about the person, I always ask them, is there anyone that you wouldn't want to share this morning at the funeral? Because we all have a crazy Aunt Myrtle in our families. And as I've said before, if you don't think you have a crazy Aunt Myrtle in your family, you might be the crazy Aunt Myrtle. So you don't want to have crazy Aunt Myrtle step to the microphone and start eulogizing the person because you never know what they're going to say. But maybe you have a family member other than crazy Aunt Myrtle who could share those good words about you. Or maybe it would be a friend who would step to the microphone and have some good words, some good things to say about you. What if God himself could speak those good words about you at your funeral? And what if you didn't have to wait until your funeral to hear God say good things about you and over you and to speak those good things in your life about you? Well, that word eulogy comes from a, some, some other words that's where that we get in this passage we're going to look at today, the word eulogeo. It's the same eulogy phrase, uh, root word, and it just simply means to speak good words or to speak good things about someone. And in the Bible, they usually translate that word as the word blessing. In the passage we're going to look at this morning in 1 Peter, it says this, For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. God wants to be able to say and to speak those, those good words in your life about you and over you and to give you that blessing, that, that good word. So today's passage is going to show us how we can have God speak those good words into our lives and about us. So we are in 1 Peter chapter 3, and I'll be reading verses 8 through 12 this morning. In there we read this. To sum up, let all be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. Verse 10, For let him who means to love life and see good days refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. And let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears 
attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. That passage tells us that God desires to have that blessing for us, that, that good word. And Peter outlines in there how it is that we can receive God's blessing, his good words in our lives. But we've got to get things in the right order. We've got to get these steps in the right order. That passage started off with this phrase. To sum it up, to, to sum up the last two chapters we've looked at over the last two Sundays, I just kind of come up, came up with a, a, a summary phrase, if you will, a sentence. And it's this. The first two chapters of Peter can be summarized by saying this. You, you are a foreigner in this world who is chosen by God. And you must live a life that is different. The word used in the Bible is holy. Which will lead people to have their own relationship with God. To me, that's kind of the, to sum it up, that he talks about at the start of that passage. If you've taken any kind of computer programming or any kind of programming language, you know that there's a, um, a programming statement that looks something like this. It's an if-then statement. If this, then that. If this cause, then this effect. If, then. And we use that in parenting. We say things like this. If you clean your room, then we'll go get ice cream. There's a reward. Or we say, if you don't clean your room, then you cannot use electronics for the rest of the weekend. It's a punishment. An if-then. Well, Peter's going to give us an if-then statement in this passage. And the if is this first step. See, we can have that blessing from God in our lives, but we've got to get these steps in the right order. And the first step is this. We've got to be people of character who handle conflict well. See, that, that first step is that you and I must be people of character who handle conflict well. The structure of this passage that I read was Peter makes some statements, he gives some God-inspired teaching, and then he uses some Old Testament passages by quoting them to elaborate on those things that he's just taught. And in that passage, we see both some thoughts that God gave Peter and that he then quoted from the Old Testament that have to do with our character. Now, earlier today, Stacy shared about that Proverbs 31 woman and how she is a woman of character. Well, the words of the, the characteristics of someone who has character are mentioned here in this passage. And these are the ones that Paul or Peter outlines. Now, we could take a whole month and study every single one of these, but I'm going to give them to you in about 10 seconds. If we're going to be people of character, we have to be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, humble in spirit. Then he quotes the Old Testament where he says, you must also keep a tongue from evil and keep your lips from speaking deceit. Peter says, if we are going to be men and women of character, those things need to be true in our lives. And then he says it's not just character, it's also about how you handle conflict. You see, our normal tendency as humans is when someone hurts us, we want to get revenge. We want to get vengeance. But this passage says that we're supposed to handle conflict in this way to not return evil for evil, to not return insult for insult. Then he quotes the Old Testament, to not turn from, or to turn from evil and do good, to seek peace, to pursue peace. Peter's outlining for us what a person of character who handles conflict well looks like. And he says, if we're going to receive God's blessing, then we need to be people of character and handle our conflict well. That's the if. If we do that, then, step two, we receive God's blessing. It said in verse 9, partway through it, that you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. And then, Toward the end of that passage, it tells us what that blessing is in verse 12. It says, For the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, 
and his ears are attending to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. It says that, that we can have that blessing from God, and that blessing is that God would, would hear us, that his eyes would be upon us, and he would hear our prayers. Do you ever wonder if, if God hears you when you pray? Well, this passage says if you are a person of character, then the blessing that God has for us is that he hears our prayers. And you don't have to wonder anymore if he hears you. You can know that God has his ears tuned to hear us and hear our prayers. And then it says in a negative way that the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. That's the opposite of the blessing. But said a different way, and the positive is that if we are people of character who handle conflict well, then God's face would be toward us. The scriptures promise us that blessing from God when we are people who are people of character, then God speaks that good word to us. Sometimes I find it helpful to read these passages in other translations. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 12 in the New Living Translation says it this way. For the scriptures say, If you want to enjoy life and see many happy days... Keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. What a great promise that if we, step one, are people who have character, who have the ability to handle conflict well in the way that he teaches, then step two, we receive God's blessing. But here's a problem. We are not able to have the good character that's called for and to handle conflict well. Go back to that list that was in the beginning of that passage. Are you all of those things all the time? Have you always handled conflict well? And that creates a, a tension for us because we need to have high, can, high character and handle conflict well in order to receive God's blessing. But we can't do that. We can't be that kind of a person on our own. In fact, we're, we're taught in the Old Testament that even our good deeds are like filthy rags apart from God. Even the most well-intentioned thing we do has a guilt, a, a, a tinge of, of either selfishness or possibly arrogance or some ill motive in it, even when we're trying our best to do our best. Even our good deeds are as filthy rags. We can't do it on our own. Jesus in John 15 verse 5, he says this to his disciples, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you stay joined to me and I stay joined to you, then, then you will produce lots of fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. He doesn't say, apart from me, you can only do a little bit. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So what are we to do then? If you haven't already, I would like you to draw a train for me. Just grab a piece of scrap paper there around your house and just draw a train. And, and I'd like you to have these three cars in your train. A, a coal car, a caboose, and an engine. Draw your train, just real quick sketch with a coal car, a caboose, and an engine. Growing up, I used to love when we were downtown and the train would come through. It was a small town and the train would come across the tracks and we would all have to stop. And I loved it because I just, I loved seeing the trains, but I also would always look on the caboose for my uncle. I had an uncle Butch and an uncle Don who both worked in the trains and my uncle Butch would sometimes be on that train that would come through town and we'd be able to, to see him. And that was always just exciting to see, to see my uncle there. In fact, a couple weeks ago on Facebook, 
the question came up, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, for me, one of the things I wanted to be was a train engineer. I just loved the idea of being able to be an engineer on a train. I had a little train at my house. And in fact, when this whole pandemic and the quarantine started, I thought, now's the time. I'm going to build my, my train table that I've been wanting to do for years and just have never had the time. Well, we've got time, kind of, right now. I think I'm busier now than I, I usually am. But my problem, even more than the busyness, is that I'm sitting where my train table is going to go. And my office has turned into this recording studio for, for our services. So my train table's on hold right now, but my love for trains is, is always still there. So I want you to imagine, if you will, on your train, three different cars. The three different cars that I ask you to draw, and I'm going to do a little quick set change here. And the three cars that I asked you to draw, I want them to represent different things for you this morning. All right, we're ready. I would like this coal car to represent your character and how you handle conflict. And I would like this caboose to represent God's blessing in your life. And we talk today that this passage teaches us that if we have character and conflict, then we have God's blessing. And one of those blessings is that we can have a relationship with Jesus. We can have a, a time, a relationship with him both here and now and all for all of eternity. So allow that engine to represent your, your relationship with Jesus. So we have our, our character and our, our how we handle conflict. We have our caboose representing the blessings that God gives us, and the engine representing our relationship with Jesus. That's typically how we would uh, kind of walk through that passage based on what I said to you today. But the problem is, you know that's not how a train is supposed to work. Order matters. And how we arrange this is going to make a difference for us. Because if we try to do good on our own, we're not able to do that. Things are out of order. We can't do that on our own and we fail. And this train doesn't work. So Peter addresses this problem a couple of verses later in this chapter. And he tells us how to get the steps in the right order so we can see those blessings from God. And he says that in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. And in there he says this, for Christ also died for the sins once and for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. You see, we've got to get our train in the right order for things to work, which means we've got to get our relationship with Jesus at the front. Trying to do things on our own and be good people on our own just isn't going to work. The only way it works is when we get our relationship with Jesus right first. When we get the steps in the right order of a right relationship with Jesus. And out of that relationship, then we're able to see our character change and become more like him. And we're able to learn how to handle conflict in our lives because he demonstrates that for us. And he shows us and he teaches us and he helps us. And when we do that, then because of him, then we are able to see God's good word, God's blessing in our lives. Go ahead and look at your drawing. I'm going to guess that this is the order you all put your train in. You put the engine first, followed by the coal car, followed by the caboose. That's not the order I told you. I said a, caboose, or a coal car, a caboose, and an engine. But we all know that's not how trains work. And that's not how our spiritual lives work either. It starts with the engine. That right relationship with Jesus. And out of that right relationship with Jesus come our conduct and then the blessing of God. He's the one who brings us into that right relationship. Because of Jesus then, we can have things in a right place between us and God. On our own, we can do nothing. But with Jesus, we're able to live lives of character and 
handle conflict well, that bring pleasure to him. And God speaks that blessing, that eulogy, those good words over us. But you've got to get your relationship with Jesus right first. So, so how do we do that? It's pretty simple. The first thing is just to believe that, that he is the only way that you can be forgiven for what you've done. To believe that, that he died for you, as that passage says, the just for the unjust. And when we believe that he's the only one who can forgive us, and when we believe that he died for us, then we can have a right relationship with God. And God will speak those good words, those blessings over us, both now and for all of eternity. But it's all because of Jesus. Can you pray with me? Jesus, I thank you for Peter's teaching today. And I acknowledge that I and all of us, we get the train out of order sometimes. We think that we've got to be good enough people on our own so that we can receive your blessing and eternity with you, Jesus, and be in that relationship. And when we try to do it on our own, it fails miserably every time. God, would you forgive us for having things out of order? And instead, would you help us to live lives that are in the right order that you call us to? And the first thing is us getting right between us and you, Jesus, this morning. And maybe you've never made things right between you and Jesus. All you have to do is right there where you're at. Just let him know that you do believe in him. That you want him to forgive you for what you've done. And that you want to put him in charge of the train. You want to put him in charge of your life and that you will follow him to the best of your ability from here out. And God, I thank you for that confidence that we can have, that when we ask that, you are more than willing and interested in forgiving us and helping us to get things put in the right order. God, I thank you this morning for our Mother's Day that we celebrate. And God, I pray that on this Mother's Day, we can mark a day that we got things right between us and you. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Well, when you get the steps in the right order and you get Jesus pulling the train, starting it off, now and for all of eternity, your relationship with him is right. And then your character follows and then God's blessing, his good words can be spoken over you and in your life. And that's my desire for you today. If this morning you've chosen to follow Jesus or to make things right between you and him, I would encourage you to, to send me an email or to fill out a communication card. There's a link in our description there. Fill that out and just let me know um, where you are today in your relationship with him. And if you're not sure what to say, just say the word train. I don't know what you're talking about. A couple quick announcements this morning. First one is this. If you have some prayer requests, we have a team of people in our church who would love to be praying for you. You can again follow the link in the description and fill out one of those requests. And I'll share that with those who, who have committed to be praying for people. Secondly, it's just a reminder what I shared with you last Sunday. Our governor has now uh, moved us to yellow. Uh, i got to admit the world doesn't look crazily different, different to us today now that it's yellow, but we're officially now yellow in our, in our part of the state at least. And... Uh, that opens the door for some other developments in our community with businesses and all that. But we as a church have decided to continue to meet online for right now. I've met with our leaders and talked with some other people as well, and we're, we're getting guidance from both our, our state and our national leaders. And based on all of that, we are choosing to continue to order, to have just online uh, services for now. Uh, Secretary of Health has asked us in Pennsylvania to not be in groups larger than 25 to continue to social distance, to wear masks. So in that set of regulations and recommendations, we've chosen to continue to do just this online service for now. And we'll continue to monitor that, that constantly changing situation. If we've never learned nothing in the last two months, we've learned that this is constantly changing as they learn more and more information and change the, the policies and the guidelines. So we're constantly gonna be monitoring that and when things change, I will gladly share that information with you. But while you're at home, let me remind you of, of a resource that we offer for free. 
It's called Right Now Media. Right Now Media is a great way for you to continue your Christian journey as you're at home right now. And if you need access to this free resource, it's free to you. It's free to anyone who's connected to our church. Then I encourage you to contact me and I can get you set up with that. Fourth, Hope River Kids. I encourage you to stick around for the video premiere that will be on our YouTube channel this morning after this service. And uh, you can catch that in here in just a little bit. Well, happy Mother's Day. It is certainly a different kind of Mother's Day. But moms, we celebrate you today. We celebrate all of our mothers today. And I hope that while it's different, this will be a very special Mother's Day for you this year. We'll see you next Sunday.